to another edition of The Brian McKnight Show. Before we get into what we're doing tonight, let's bring out Kim Whitley. Hi, Brian. Hey, Kim. How you doing? Listen, Good to see you guys. I, I am so excited. Uh, I didn't tell you this, but I, I've been working on my stand-up comedy skills. Mm. Look, okay. I, listen, I think it's one of the greatest jobs and we're also one of the hardest yes, ones to get is. up in front of an audience and tell jokes. So I wanted to sort of run one of my jokes past okay. you since I know you're real good at it. So I know that it usually comes from personal experience. Two of my uncles, they were sitting out on the porch. Uh, my Uncle Fred, my Uncle Cleo, and the dog was out there and the dog's just licking himself, licking himself, licking himself. Mm -hmm. So my Uncle Fred turns to my uncle, he says, uh, man, I wish I could do that. And my other uncle said, well, he bites you. <laughs> Hold up, is that the joke? <laughs> okay, the reason why the audience is laughing because it was so bad. I First thought, of all, no, this is, you're funny. missing the steps. Yeah, okay. I, I go to my okay, daddy's comedy school. Okay, please, my father, has, he broke it down to me. It's, it's, you gotta have the premise, which is the uncle and the dog, right. your setup, okay. okay, and then your punch. Right. Your setup was great. The punch and then the act out at the end. Like as you said, he bit me and then you started doing like the dog, like act like that. Like, it might have, you might have sold the joke. But but they laughed. So what? I, they laughed because it was bad. If they okay. laughed because it was bad. I'm going to work on it. You work on that. I'll work on that. Stick to singing a little bit more. Okay. Um, Got it. But Got it. I've been working on something. What's that? I've been working on um, just relationship stuff. Okay. And I, I just want to know okay, maybe you can help me. If a guy asks, you out on a date uh -huh. on Facebook. Is that acceptable? Well, do you know the guy? Yes, I know him. Does he have your phone number? Yes. Then he he's probably not going to get a date. Well, uh, what if you've already said yes? Well, Kim, our first guest should be able to help you with all of that. He is the CEO of Master Matchmakers, and he stars in Tough Love on VH1. Please welcome Steve Ward to the show. <laughs> Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> I mean, I've seen the show, but I didn't know you were going to be this handsome. And tall. That's and tall. How did that, you know? That's, that's what everybody says. Yeah. i got to spread my long legs out. Fabulous. You are tall. I thought you were going to be... This is great. I love your show. Oh, thank you. Yes, um, Brian's here. I'm sorry, that's Brian. Again. That's okay. I know, you know, when, when handsome men show up, you, you want to be all over them, so please. I, I wasn't have... ready for him to be tall and handsome. <laughs> that's what threw me off. You're not into short, short men? Uh, my friends would say yes. I'm into all men. Oh, okay. That's a sad situation. Well, that's good. Maybe you can help me. That's why he's here. He's here to help Are help you a man eater? <laughs> it's okay. It's not I, a bad I'm thing. I'm a man nibbler. <laughs> okay. I hear them bad. I, I have a feeling he'd disagree. I don't know anything about what she does when she's not here. Okay. <laughs> so this is all going to be new to me. This is all going to be new. What? Can you tell us about your show? Tough yeah, Love? sure. Give us um, well, right now we're airing Tough Love Couples every Monday night at 9 o'clock on VH1. And uh, it's a spinoff of the original show, Tough Love where we worked with eight single women uh, through eight weeks of boot camp where they tackled particular issues that were preventing them from forming healthy relationships. Well, we took it one step further and decided to take six couples that have all been in long-term relationships that supposedly love each other but are in a very dysfunctional state right now. And so we try to put their relationships to the test and at the end, they need to decide whether or not they should break up or uh, get engaged. What, what makes you the expert? <laughs> uh, well, um, my mom and I have been professional matchmakers together uh, with more than 30 years of combined experience. And together, you know, we've learned a thing or two about relationships along the way. Well, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, my friends have considered me a uh, matchmaker, mm -hmm. but they call me Madam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little different. Yeah, so, a little bit different. You know, mm -hmm. Steve, I find it fascinating. As I, as I travel all around the world, I see people together. Mm -hmm. So it's not the getting together part mm -hmm. that's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's probably the staying together. Yeah, well, usually what ends up happening is after a, a short period of time with somebody, the, the mystique or the ideal image sort of fades away and you start settling into reality. And you see the person for who they are and what their issues are. And it's important that you're able to communicate with each other and you respect each other. And there's a, a strong amount of uh, trust there as well. And if you can sort of embody these core principles, then your relationship should last. Mm -hmm. are, are you a good communicator? I think so. What sign are you? Scorpio. <laughs> Your eyes. Is, I'm feeling very uncomfortable. 
On the first dinner date, does the guy always have to pick up the check? I actually have a few kind of standard practices. Uh, you know, first of all, it is customary for a guy to pay for a first date. Uh, if he's not very sure about the girl, if it's a blind date or mm -hmm. if it's, uh, you know, something you, maybe you met online or if somebody set you guys right. up, then do something that's not as expensive. Like, do a drive-by. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't look like your picture! <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, if, if you do go so far as to take somebody out to dinner, it is customary for the guy to pay. Now, for a female, if you're not uh, interested in seeing the guy again, mm -hmm. then insist on splitting the bill. As opposed to saying, look, ah, this isn't going to work out. I'm probably not going to see you again, but let's have a nice meal. Yeah, no, no, exactly. No, no, I don't think that's good. Okay, I have a question, because sure. uh, uh, me and Brian were having a discussion earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, is it okay for a guy to ask you out on a date on Facebook? I mean, that you know. You already no, know he has your phone number, and he's like, hey, you want to go out? No, that's a, that's a very uh, good question, as a matter of fact. Uh, I hear that all the time. Um, I do think that women appreciate it when a guy picks up a phone and calls. If a guy is willing to leave a voicemail saying, you know, hey, I, I, I'm really interested in you. I'd like to take you out sometime. You know, give me a call back and let me know if you're interested. It goes a lot further than just sending a text or a message. Thank you for that. But, I'm sorry. I was considering that you already said yes. It's kind of you don't have to tell. The, he doesn't have to know. <laughs> well, you know what, I didn't realize I said yes. But that's really that's really a good point, Brian. Because you know what ends up happening is the reason why a lot of guys will resort to using text messages or message. Well, it's because somebody has said yes. You know, somebody before oh. agreed to it. And if some other woman didn't really set the precedent and agree to it before, then they wouldn't be trying it with you. So if all women put their foot down and said, I don't like to be text messaged mm -hmm. out on a date, then guys would well, stop doing it. Well, I said yes, but you better call me to confirm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with more Steve Ward.